Uh, I want to ask, man, where, where did the, the nickname come from, uh, Brahma? Where did that come from? Brahma, man. Brahma is um, just kind of paying respects to my grandfather. He, uh, my, I'm from Louisiana. My grandfather was a cattleman. So I grew up hanging out with him, helping him work on his farm. And he had a lot of bulls, you know, a lot of cows, Brahmas hmm. and stuff. So um, when he passed away a couple years back, I, st I was kind of nicknameless at the time. Uh -huh. And um, that was kind of my my way to pay homage to him and um, yeah I liked it man it stuck you know I've got like bull paraphernalia all over my house I've got <laughs> horns and bulls everywhere throughout my house and um, so it's a nickname that I guess you say I gave myself but um, it's really like I said it's um, I'm named after my grandfather who was Alan as well and so I just wanted to kind of carry on his legacy through my nickname. That's pretty cool. It's also, uh, I don't know if you know this, but it's actually the name of a beer in uh, Brazil also. I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> I fought in Brazil a couple years ago, and um, after the fight, I was definitely drinking some Brahma. Yeah, yeah. So a lot, a lot, it's a popular beer in, um, in it Brazil, is. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to ask you, man, you're, uh, you're partnering up here with uh, Tony Ferguson to do the seminar. No. He's got a big fight coming up against uh, Khabib. Just no. want, uh, want to get your take on that, man. How do you see that going? It's an interesting fight, man. I mean, I mean that division right now, um, you know, it, it's it's stylistically it's Khabib who nobody has been able to stay on their feet against Khabib. He, he's proven to be one of the best grapplers in the UFC in mix, in, in in combat sports. Period. Um, but a lot of the guys that he's gone against, you know, they had their approach. Stay away, stay away. I don't want to even get in a clinch position. Where Tony's kind of just doing the complete opposite. He said, "You know what? I'm gonna engage. I'm gonna. I'm unorthodox. I'm, he is unorthodox. He's gonna stay unorthodox. He's gonna engage." Tony comes from a wrestling background, and the thing I think that Tony's strength has that he has in this in this fight, and uh, we'll see what happens with it. But Tony has a very unorthodox approach, and he's very good in a scramble. Tony's a very hard, hard guy to hold down. He comes from a wrestling background, but he also has a very unorthodox approach that he uses. Like, he's, show, he's showing here uh, a, an elbow kata. So it just shows that he doesn't, he's not just a wrestler, you know? And you might not think of Tony as an elite striker, but you see him outstrike guys like Rafael Dos Anjos. So his unorthodox approach and methods have been proven to give him a, an amazing track record. He's like one of the, the top I think he's maybe up there for the top three um, win streaks in the UFC right now. He's on like a nine-fight win streak mm -hmm. against top competitors. So it's working for him, man. It'll be interesting to see the clash against the high-level grappling of Khabib, against an orthodox, uh, motivated belief in himself type of style that Tony has, man. And, and you know, I'm excited to see it. I'm hoping that Tony that has what it takes and uh, gets the job done that night. What's your take on the whole interim title thing? You know, I mean, Connor obviously has a belt, but he's busy with, you know, having a kid and all that stuff. Right. And now they're making an interim title. What's what's your take on that? I get it. You know, the UFC has gone a little crazy lately uh, with the interim belts. You know, some believe it's kind of watering down the sport. But what I do like about it is, I look at it from both sides, but I like about it that if you're not defending your belt within six months, either due to injury or in, in um, Connor's case you know maybe he, his wife's pregnant or whatever so if there's not going to be an active champion but you don't want to strip that champion then it's, it is a good thing I, in my mind put an interim belt out there get the best uh, the, the best guy out there next in line to fight for the belt have the interim champion and then that way there is a belt there is a champion still competing and then when the champion does come back now it makes it an even more enticing matchup because we have two belts going and to see who the true best guy in the world is so so I look at it from both places. You don't want to water down the, uh, the belt you know, system, the championship system. But at this stage, man, we're in the UFC. We went from a 650-man roster to a 450-man roster. We've already shaved the roster. It's already the elite of the elite that's competing in the UFC. And you get guys like Tony Ferguson, Khabib, Conor McGregor. I mean, nothing is watered down. These are the best guys in the world. Eventually, if there is an interim belt facing uh, the main belt, I think it's an even more intriguing fight. So I like it.